back with us. And for those that aren't with us, dear God, we'll pray for them as well, that they'd be able to find their way back, that they feel better. And um, dear God, we pray for Brother James this morning as he brings the message. We pray that you bless him with boldness and power and by your word, that you may bring forth this message. And in your holy name, we pray for Amen. Amen.
Oh, that's why. Because they have a drum. Oh, okay. I would give the choir right there. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to take up some money to keep the doors up and lights on, missionaries on the field. Amen. Amen.
went to the bank to look for you, and I was like, ah. Welcome back. Thank you. Christians coming into the house of God with a thankful heart. 
And I, and how do you get a thankful heart? I'll say right now, I know that prayer is a reflection of what is in the heart of a Christian. Or if you're not praying, it's a reflection of what's going on in your heart. Now, my point, my point this morning is not to offend somebody. It's not to make someone angry. But I'm going to preach the word of God this morning as he has laid in my heart to preach it. Amen. And I hope that this morning you pray for me, not because you want to hear from me, but because you want to hear from God. Amen. All right, it's not too late if you have it. So I also know when I hear people pray, some people when they pray, it sounds like heaven itself opens. Right. Right. You ever heard someone pray like that? Yeah. Right. If you have it, you know, ask the Lord to teach you to pray that way. Right. Not so someone else can see it, not so they can lift your name up, but they know that when you pray, you know how to get a hold of God. And when I say, Christian, when is the last time you got a hold of God? That you knew when you prayed that God heard you, that at his throne, your prayer was there, he heard it, and he knew that he had your request at his presence. He knew that he heard you. When's the last time? Right? Right? Now, just because you haven't prayed, then shame on us for not praying. Amen. Amen. All right, shame on us. If you look at the country, the joyful noise that the Lord would love to hear, if you think about it, looking down, we know the earth is God's footstool. Prayers are not coming up from the world like they used to. Right. The noise has gotten quiet. Right. It's not a joyful noise in the Lord. It's a noise that the world wants to proclaim that they are their own gods, right. that their riches, that their fame, that their presence on this planet is what makes this planet good. Right. Right? And that the world is good because they are in it. And that your life is blessed because they are in your life. I'll tell you right now, your life is blessed. The Lord Jesus Christ is in your Amen. life. Amen. There's no blessing outside of what God gives us. This morning. So, if you don't know what the blessings are in your life, ask God. If you know how to search those things that he has laid out before you, if you don't have the wisdom to know what God has given you this morning, ask him. So he can remind you what he's given you. Amen. Even this, sometimes you don't look at the blessings from God. Amen. He sits on the coffee table collecting dusts. Yep. It sits on a coffee table while we argue in our homes, while we just watch the TV or the radio or the computer or the cell phone or whatever takes and holds our attention and does right. not give us the word of God Am the I way right? we should because we do not open that. We're letting right. the devil channel our thoughts and our attention through his devices. Now, I'm not saying you can't use those things for good. It is possible, but I guarantee you, if you leave those things on, something not glorifying to God will come in and can come in to your very home, right past your defenses. And that is not the last thing you want on your heart or your mind or anything before you come to the house of God. Amen. It's not. Amen. Right? So, prayer this morning. Do you have a place in your life for prayer? Do you make a point to get close to God in prayer? Do we? That's how we talk to the Lord is through prayer. He talks to us through his word. Solomon said that it was in his heart, right? It was in his father's heart to build a house for the Lord. But David was a man of war. So Solomon was the one that built the house, right? Solomon did. And I think that if you think about that, that's the blessing that Solomon wanted to do that, right? Sometimes, I tell you right now, I bet you, David spent many nights thinking and praying for his son that he would be wise. But it's upon it's, it's on the shoulders of the son and on the shoulders of the daughters to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord. Right. But parents should still pray. Sure. I don't care how old your children get prayed for. Them. I don't care if they're not here yet. Right. If you're looking to have children, pray for them. Amen. Children, if you're looking for a spouse, pray for them even now. Amen. Right? If you're looking for somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with, that is not a small decision that you should be making based on the shoes they wear, the clothes they wear, their where they look. Uh, what they like to do, that's something that the Lord has to lay on your heart, right? and the Lord is going to tell you who to be with for the rest of your life. So Amen. Pray about it. That doesn't mean it's a trick or a trap. Right? right? That doesn't mean you can find a bad one and ask the Lord to fix it. Right. Not that you can't, but that's not you to do that. It's not your decision. Right? Now, it's all about the place where they, could, where they could go meet God. He even stated that the heaven, and that the heaven of heavens could not contain God. That's how great God is. The heaven is not contain. We cannot even conceive of how great God is. And to put the flesh in mind, we can't do it. But you can get a glimpse of it in prayer. Right? Get close to the Lord in prayer and let him fill your soul. By all those negative emotions you have, let the Lord take those away and fill your soul. I guarantee you can't do it on your own. There is no psychologist, there's no PhD or degree that will get you any closer to God. There's no three letters that will get you any closer to God. But I know of three things to follow the Son of the Holy Ghost. That's what you need this morning. Those three things to get close to, to, get close to God. Right? Now we read a solemn prayer this morning in the main text in verse 33 through 35. You look at the condition and the result of their condition. Sit down because of sin. It even says, When thy people Israel be sitting down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. A lot of 
times right then, and you see, uh, right then is when we don't do anything. We're like, I'm in a real bad spot, not praying about it, it's not going to hear from me, and that's a lie from the devil. Right. That's what the devil wants you to think, not to pray to God. Right. Like, God doesn't want to hear from you. Well, what about the Lord Jesus Christ? He died for you. He says, lay, your, lay every care, cast every, every well, single one of your burdens on me, and he'll take them to the Lord for you. He'll petition for you. Right. But we don't give him an opportunity to do so. Why is that? Because we're distracted. And this world, we're distracted. We don't want to pray. This actually boils down to, I believe you heard that you know, last week, it boils down to pride. We might think it's because of the burden of the world, but it's actually because of pride. We don't want to humble ourselves in prayer. Right? When you take a knee, a real knee, right? That's when, it, that's when you determine where you stand with God. Right? Now, I'll say this. When you look at the condition of the children of Israel, I'd say it's pretty good. Right? But it says right here, in verse 37, then verse 34, right? Then hear thou of heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, and they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when afflict this, or when thou afflict this. Now think about this for a second. A lot of folks, the first thing they do when they get in trouble is not go to church. Right? Like, I don't need to go to church. Right? Now, of course, we know that the people are the church. Yeah. But you need to come to the house of God. That's where we need to be. Amen? Right. Amen. What's wrong with coming to the house of God? Right. What negative thing is going to happen if you take one hour or two on Sunday morning, or 45 minutes to an hour on Sunday evening to come to the house of God? Right. What do you, what do you have to do? Right. Amen. What are you going to do in those three hours that's much more important than what God will have you here? Amen. How do you know that God's not going to bring an answer from the pulpit? Right. Because right. we don't trust God. That's right. We don't have him in brain. That's right. We're not looking for an answer. That's right. We're just looking for some way we can fix our own problems. Right. We're not looking to hear from the God of heaven. Right. We're looking to hear from man as someone to solve our problems. Right. It's really easy to look horizontally, but it's a lot more difficult to go in the flesh by faith because you can't in the flesh go by faith. That's, That's right. a spiritual thing. You can't do it. Man. Right? Now, I'll tell you this, in verse 35, it says, And heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee. If they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, I tell you that right now, the first thing you have to do is to cease sinning. Right? Especially when you know what they sin. Right? right? Now, I'm not going to tell you what your sin is. The Bible says to him that knoweth what is good, doeth it not to him, it is sin. Right? right? That doesn't mean, well, I'm going to know, do these things that I know are incorrect, and God hasn't spoke to me about it yet. It's even worse than someone said, I know this is a sin, but I'm going to do it anyway. Like, what are you saying before it If you do that, the Lord let that on your heart. Why are you going to rebel against God? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Right? Does that mean I'm perfect? No, because I've been there before. Right? So I'm going to do these things. I know that. I'm probably more guilty than anybody in here. Right? This message is just as much for me as it is for you. But pray, confess, and turn from sin. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Right? Pray, confess, and turn from sin. Right? Now, I'll tell you right now, a lot of folks uh, think that, you know, a lot of these empty prayers that are going up are what are going to save people. And right. I know it's an empty prayer. I don't. Right. I don't know that from the outside. Right. Only they do. It's between them and the Lord. I am not a filter between them and God where I have the ability to determine <laughs> if somebody's prayer was a good one. But I'll tell you right now, I have heard people pray, and my heart was blessed because at the same time I'm praying, right. and I know that someone got a hold of God. Right? It doesn't mean I'm anybody. Right. So I'm not. Right? So when you start thinking you're somebody, it's probably when you're not going to hold God. Right? Like, hey, you're so great, bless me. Yep. Right? Or if you have a million dollars in the bank account, Lord, can I buy that? Right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. The Lord bless me with this. Like, okay. You know? Now, on the outside, to us, you might look at somebody and say, well, you have the ability to do A, B, and C, and that's not really God bless me. That's just you doing what you want. And that's possible. Well, let's just do it everyone. I can tell you right now, it's a blessing when somebody has nothing and they have that heart of God. Right. That is the ultimate blessing. That's Amen. a wonderful thing to see. I love seeing that. Right? I love seeing that because I tell you right now, God can't bless you if you don't let him. Right. And prayer is a symbol of obedience. So if you want the Lord to be able to bless you in your life, pray and talk to him about it. And there's something that you want. Pray to him about it. I'm not wall out, walls out without praying. The wild is always not good. <laughs> Right? Things are not level, almost stepping on nails, it just didn't go right. And it seems so sometimes when you pray and say, Lord, I know this is a simple, medium path, can you help me with this? Because 
I need to get this done, and I'd like to get it done, right? It's a desire in my heart, right? Right. Now, some people say, well, you can't pray for those things. Like, right? oh, I have, and I thank the Lord bless that. Amen. And I've been able to do that. I don't know I, I can do. Because <coughs> I tell you right now, I wanted to be a Navy Chief Petty Officer. That didn't really know that until I was eligible to be one. So in January, I prayed and asked the Lord several times. But before that, I was studying and preparing and preparing and studying and asking the Lord to bless the study and asking the Lord to help me sure. to see things that I needed to do. So reach that goal. Sure. And then in January, I took the test and I prayed before the test. I prayed after the test. Yeah. Right? Someone said, Lord, you don't know, need to pray one time. I'm like, well, it's on my heart to pray about it because it was important to me. Right? Amen. Right? But you know what, though? You know why I shouldn't stop praying for everyone else? Right? Because after all, I stopped praying for that and everyone else. I trusted my Christian brother to pray for that. I let you go. So the Lord's in your hand. Doesn't mean I wasn't thinking about it. Doesn't mean sometimes I'm like, by the way, Lord, I remember when I was asking about, you know, that chief that ever came, you didn't make that happen, you know, that'd be great. <laughs> really great, right? And I tell you, they, when the test results came out, they said my score is high enough to make board. I said, wow, that's, that's great. I'm really excited. Now I've got to get all this paperwork together and prove to a board of master chiefs and commanders and all those people that sit down and judge me why. I am worthy to be a chief petty officer. Why I am worthy. Right? Not why I could do the job, why I am worthy. Amen. Right? So then you go months and months and months and you wait. Right? I remember I went to work. Got my package together. It had five pages in it. And I was saying it's probably not enough, but it's good enough. And I was I scanned it on the computer and I was getting ready to send the email. It was a four-day weekend, Friday off. That's if you're working in the government, you get those Fridays off. So I'm holiday it's really, really wonderful sometimes. Yeah. You get those four days off, it's great. Right? <laughs> but I'm looking forward to that when I retire. Having to work Friday and Monday with a holiday, not fun, right? But uh, nevertheless, I was at work that Friday, and I prayed, and I went to hit sin, and my heart was led not to hit sin. I said, okay, so what then? Am I missing something? Interesting fact, the week before, the administrative office, where all of our offices, where all of our papers are kept, is not really one that anyone is supposed to walk into. Because you can get someone's personal information, right? You don't have any integrity. But guess who changed the combo the week before? This guy. So I knew the combo. So I went in there, went only to my record. When I pulled out some more documentation, added it to my file, make sure, because I'll tell you right now, they say no staples, no this, have everything facing this way, have your social security number top right hand corner, have all these things at the bottom, I think you probably do an office key package, right? Yeah. You know <laughs> how thorough Brother Charles is. But I had a much bigger package that I needed to submit, and I was like, well, I heard that's a bad thing, but I prayed again, and I had peace, and I submitted that thing. Right? Now, I'll tell you right now, it was always 7% or less. Right, so if there's 800 people, only 7% were advanced to the rank of chief petty officer. And guess what? The following year, you had to do it all over again. So, we are bringing it up. You guys mind praying? You guys did these things? Just pray the Lord for them. Amen. Right, so I knew what I wanted, but I also knew what I prayed the Lord for. Not my will, but time, Lord. So I waited. Waited and waited and waited. That's all you can do in the military. Wait. Yeah, hurry up and wait. You always have deadlines for you, but you're like, hey. Oh, uh, not time yet? Okay, today? No, not today. Statistically, it's every day today. Every year it's been this day. Not this day? Okay, I'll wait. All right? But I remember going one day to work, and they said, hey, ET1 is what they call me, electronics technician first class. The quotas are out today, which is kind of a lame thing when I think about it, because they tell you how many people are going to make it, but they don't tell you who. <laughs> so the quotas came out. They said, your rate is 22%. The chief. I was thinking, wow, that's pretty high. It hasn't been that high ever. Right? But I said, nevertheless, Lord, you know, if it's your will, I want to get too excited and haughty, high minded and think, you know, this and this and that. So I asked uh, my family friends, I said, please pray, because this, they, they came out today and I got my hopes up a little bit, but I want to get my hopes up too much. So give it another few weeks. I come to work and they said, hey, guess what? The results are going to come out today at Long Park. So log on to the computer and check and see if you made it. I said, awesome. So I'm all switching my Let me not call my wife so I don't get her hopes up. I wait. One o'clock comes. I log on. Whole web server crashes. Yep. Because the whole Navy is logging on the ship. Yep. <laughs> it's not going to work, right? Not going to work. So I'm sitting there. And I hear this retired uh, one of the ladies from the chief petty officer. She yelling. Can you imagine what a retired female chief petty officer yelling sounds like? But she was yelling for the next room. She decided. I didn't really know what to do. So I went over there. Went over there and I said, 
said, hey, hey, don't lie to us. And so I said, uh, you have a list? Yes, I have a list of all the names, all people that made it. All right? They don't email you and say, congratulations, you have to find out. Right? So I said, can you look and see if there's a William James on the list? And she said, no, there's not. He said, wait, your name Williams? I said, yes. He said, Williams, J.A.? And I said, there's a lot of people that have the, the first name starting with J and A. So I look and I said, Williams, J.A., 129. I'm like, okay, who's that? So I called my last command. I said, hey, am I on your list? They said, nope. What's on new lists? New commands list. So I waited. All the new chief selectees go over to this other building and start their training, and I Waited. And I waited. And I waited. I said, nevertheless, Lord, it's your will. I'm trying to let you know. So I grab a bag, and I see this chief, this little chief, walking down the passageway towards me, and he has a piece of paper. And he said, is that your name? Now, my name is wrong with me. Yeah, my first name is William James Fisher. <coughs> and I said, William James Fisher, Fisher, I'm the Robert Williams the first, and it had an S on it. He said, you the S name? I said, selected. He said, that's correct. Say, go over to ASW and get ready for your chief training. I'm like, I'm selected, right? <laughs> the first thing I did was thank the Lord because it was because of him, not because of me. Right? I made it that 12 years, which in my job is not much. Usually you make it about 15 years. So it's not uncommon for somebody to make it before that. It's not. But I prayed and asked the Lord, said, so please let this be the time and the hour. And I prayed fervently about that thing. I did. Right? But think about this for a second. What if I had prayed fervently for others? Right? For other people. Not many. What if I spent more time in prayer for someone else than spending so much more time analyzing their life? What they're doing or not doing? Right? Sometimes we act so negatively and nasty to our people because we don't think they're doing what we, what we should, what we're doing. Like, you don't do what I do, I'm not closer with you. I don't see um, how that's necessarily a good thing. Right? The Lord lays on people's hearts what He has them to do. Now, we're also not God. Right? So if we see somebody doing something wrong, we love them. Sure. Right? And love and prayer. You shouldn't go walk up to somebody without praying for them. Amen. Right? We don't know. If somebody comes in late for church, right? And we're like, hey, you should be on time. And I'm like, well, it's also that this morning, so I was kind of hot. Right? Right? And you kind of feel, you never, you never know. Right? I'm not saying that's, that's the excuse every time, like when your, your brother dies like 10 times. <laughs> Right? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying right now that if we fear God, we're going to know what He's going to try to get our attention. If we fear God, we will develop that reference, not being just afraid of what He'll do because of sin, but we know that we, we have, we love His respect, we adore Him, we admire Him, but we want to be in His favor. And we don't want to do anything that will be out of His favor. Right? We want to maintain that relationship. I think it's amazing today. All the cell phones, right? If you miss a phone call, people get mad. Yeah. I'm like, well, I was at work. I had a signal. Like, Bro, I called you ten times today. I'm like, okay. How many missed calls do we have from God? Right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. How many? Yeah. Amen. I feel like in my email sometimes it drives my wife crazy. I think at one time I came out from the phone and I had 5,000 emails. I had it set it on my phone. So you're not answering those? It's like, I don't know where to start. Right, and that's what happens in the Christian life. You don't pray for so long. You have all these things that you didn't pray for. Yeah. And you have this backlog sure. of things the Lord is trying to deal with you on. Right. But we're too proud to go back and look. Yeah. Control all the things. Yep. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do. Control. Control it. Like, I don't know if you're trying to say, Lord, we'll start over again. Yeah. How much good is growth can we miss? Now, I know that the world is a battlefield. You go to 1 Kings, where we're at, chapter, chapter 8, verse 24. It says, If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, toward the house that they have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication to maintain their cause. The world is a battlefield. Prayer is the medium that we use to get to our great commander, right? Prayer can heal, prayer can comfort, prayer can avail a great many ways that burden the soul. Right. Healing the sick, help us to get the burden to seek the lost, and caring for the saved children of God. We forget about that one. Caring for the saved children of God. Amen. Right? The, the brethren. Right? 
Right? If we love each other, we'll pray for one another. I'll tell you that right now. Amen. Right? Go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. It's a blessing to know that we have prayer warriors, prayer warriors in this church. I know this young prays for a lot of things. Huh? Prays for a lot of people. I believe she does. Yeah. Right? She gets in that car pretty much every service. I'm like, amen. I don't know who all these people are, but we'll pray for them. But she does, and she prays for them. Prays the Lord for them. All right? Now it says, right here, in uh, verse 1, all, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, but would God we had died in this wilderness. And we act like that when the going gets tough sometimes yep. as Christians. We just want to call oh, yeah. right. right. Why do I need to come to church? Why do I need to pray? Why do I need to partic participate in hearing the gospel? Why do I need to do yep. these things? I got stuff going on. Oh, yeah. You brought me out here to suffer and die. Like, well, it's not about you. Amen. Amen. It's not about you. It's about Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. So right. pray and find out what your role is. Amen. It says, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be afraid? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? I might as well go back out to the world, some Christians say. They treat me nicer than some Christians. Yep. And unfortunately, sometimes that's true. They shouldn't go back out to the world. As a matter of fact, pray for them that the spite will use you. Pray for them that they hate you. Break my holes upon their head. Let the Lord deal with them. Yes. That's what we're supposed to do. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Oh, yeah. So as a matter of fact, we're going to start a committee. We're going to vote him as president. We're going to go back into the world. Why in the world? Especially about after what, what the Lord did yeah. for them. We as Christians sometimes forget what the Lord did. We don't think yeah. about that crucifix that was standing on the hill in the hot sun. We don't think about the vinegar and the hyssop that he was given. We don't think about the beating that he took. We don't think about the prayer in the garden. We don't think about those things the Lord did for us and the burden of our sin that he took upon himself. We forget those things, all right? But guess what? The Lord knows that we're going to forget those things sometimes. And he made a way. For us to return unto him for prayer. Amen. 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 They are Joshua, the son of Nani, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent the clothes. And they, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. But the Lord will lie with us, and he will bring us unto this land, and give it us a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not be against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. And they're talking about the land that the Lord said they could have. And Pharaoh said, hey, we can take it. They said, no, we can't, Caleb. Have you seen those people? Have you seen them? My like grasshopper said, they're going to tear us up. They're going to destroy us. There's no one. We might as well just go back into the road and create it. Good. It's not working. Right? And there may be some giants out here that think they own the world. There may be some giants in your life that they can run you, but our God is bigger than every single one of them. If you pray to him, he can give you direction. He can overcome it. Pray through a little bit of faith. That's all it takes. A little bit of faith. The size of a mustard seed, right? The grain of a mustard seed. That size, the Lord can do a lot with that. That's the best, that's the best investment you'll ever make. Right? Look at that portfolio. Just give me a little bit. Stop moving mountain for it. Just give me a little bit. And I'll take care of whatever you've got in your life. Right? Now, of course, if we pray, we're going to line up in obedience to the Lord. Who will? Right? But if we decide we're not going to pray, we start going off course. And as you think about it, there are leaders in the church that say, we're going to go this way. And they said, no, we're not, because I don't think so. Right? So anyone can steer a ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. And that's what the pastor's role is, role is in the church. And chart the course. But his course lines up with the Word of God. Right? Amen. Right? I believe Amen. that. Does everyone in this church believe that? That our Amen. pastor's course lines up with the Word of God? Amen. So pray for the pastor that he can keep leading us in the right direction. And then Amen. pray that they'll follow and lift him up and pray right, Mom. because he's at the forefront taking the beating for us right Amen. all the time as right. the head of this church. Yeah. What we do affects him, positive yeah. and negative. Yeah. What we do affects our brethren, positive and negative. Yeah. Whatever happened at home this morning, if you didn't pray and brought them to the house of God, yeah. that affects the service this morning. Yeah. Right? If you don't pray when you go home, this afternoon, and you don't come back tonight, that affects the services. Yeah. I don't know how hard it is for a pastor to see empty views when people that are normally here just aren't coming and they don't say why. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, if you got something going on, let the pastor know. Amen. He has flesh of a man, just like I have flesh of a man, just like you have flesh of a woman or whatsoever dignity you are. Right. We all have flesh. Hey, loves and he's concerned about you. Let him know. Hey, I can't be there because of this. Right? You think he doesn't care? 
Right. Then you want to pray for you? Right. He's not going to tell everybody. Amen. Amen. I've never heard him come before the, the, the pulpit gossip to you. No, I haven't, right? So why not? Now it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to that you will not this. I understand that. Sure. I just church for six months one time and I was in the desert. Yeah. Right? Anybody say that's wicked, my buddy. I could have just went a wall from the military and come to church. I don't know that that would have been pleasing to God. Right? Like, what do you do? I well, I just wanted to come to church. Well, I'd sit right here and you would be nothing. I probably could reach more people out there if I was saved if I believed the gospel. Yeah. Out there, you don't have access to it. Right. I do. Yeah. You don't have access to the base. Most of you, I do. Yeah. Right. 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 A lot of folks lately, you know, they know where I stand. They know it. Yeah. I'm trying to win them every day. That's difficult because some of them just push your buttons. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Guess what? You can't win this to a coworker. Find someone again. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody else like, hey, you want to come over for you know, come over to my place for a little bit? Bring them around on the Christian. Win them from the world. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to win those souls that know you. Right? Amen. All right. It's a little bit different. When they try to know you. Amen. Every day and every day out. Day up, day out. Right? right? Your testimony is important. Amen. Now, I'm trying to keep going a little, a little quicker here, right? Amen. So, we're also going to look at that and read that basically uh, in numbers, you know, Caleb's trying to say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're fine. We right. trust the Lord. We got this. God's got this. Right? Right? There's an issue today. Many soldiers in the cross spend much time nursing Christians that are bearing wounds. And a lot of their wounds are self-inflicted. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? There's, there's a big difference between nursing Christians that got hurt. Because that happens sure. in the world. That's why we're supposed to bear you one another's burdens, right? But a lot of Christians have wounds and they inflicted themselves because they want out into the world. Right? Right, right. And then some Christians have to go out there, like it says in Galatians, not be tempted, to kind of help break them back and restore them to where they were before. Right? And not every Christian can do that. Right. Right. Some Christians are like, well, I'll just pray for you because I don't know how to help you with that situation. That's between you and the Lord, but I can pray and lift you up so you can get close enough to be able to deal with that, right? <coughs> right? So, it says, so many decide to remain burned down with a load of care instead of casting every care on Jesus. He asks for them and he wants them. So tell them to Jesus. Go to Galatians 5.5. Well, go to Galatians 5. We're almost done, I promise. <laughs> Alright, so stand fast therefore to liberty where with Christ that made us free and be not entangled the game with the yoke of bondage. Right. Behold, I Paul say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Right? Again, if you just do something because the church says do something and it doesn't line up with the right of God, then it's not going to be of any benefit to you. Just as much preaching comes out of this pulpit is coming upon you to study and show thyself approved unto God, right? A workman working not, a working making not ashamed, right? With dividing the word of truth, right? You're supposed to take it, break the bread to yourself and eat of it, not divide the truth from the truth, which is what the world's doing, right? Divide the word of truth so you can partake of it and see that what comes from the pulpit is good. A lot of times we come to the house of God and get all these messages and all these words in the No prayer. Don't go home and think about it. No digesting, right? If you will, we just leave. Right? right. That's all we're supposed to be doing. Right? For I testify again in verse 3 to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whatsoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And your faith is going to grow if you pray. If you read the Word of God. Right. right, the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So if you're not hearing it, like, wow, I prayed that God would give me a message from the pulpit, and I heard it this morning, and I'm going to come back tonight and hear what else he has for me. Amen. Right? Amen. Your faith for the road. Right. right. You hear it, right? People get saved because they hear the word of God. Amen. They see the word of God. A lot of people are looking at you as well. They're not just listening. Right. Right? They're looking and seeing what you're doing. If you're doing this, yep. you're doing something completely different, and we turned off by it. Sure. A lot of people are not speaking. Amen. Right. right? They're blind and they're dumb to the word of God, but they're not speaking. Right. Amen. Right. The devil says, hey, see that hypocrisy? Oh, yeah. Really easy to do. You know what I do? I let my friends know I'm going to preach so you know I'm not making a mistake. Amen. Right? And not trying to be fake. Right. Like, well, I'm so old. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. 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 Right. Well, I'm not qualified to join my team. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus Christ that qualified me by His Amen. righteousness, by His clothing and the robe that He gave me a spotless white. Right? That's His righteousness, not mine. Amen. Because of His righteousness, 
I even desire to do anything so I like the Word of God. Not because I'm somebody, but because I want to try to be what leads to the Lord. That should be everyone's prayer today. Right? Now the Bible also says, Some ladies today stand and stiffen their neck toward God. He that stiffeneth his neck, being off of a bruised house, be suddenly broken. That without ringing. Suddenly. Quick. You're done. Oh, right? Right? You can't rebel against God so many times. It's reckoned to be nothing, right? Now Christians today spend a lot more time getting down in the world. Right? Just getting down. The club, the bar, or whatever. Getting down. Yep. Right? Well, that's not the kind of getting down Christians need to do. We need to get down in prayer. And right. bury our hearts in prayer. The Bible says a merry heart would be like a medicine. How do you get a merry heart? You bury it in prayer. Right? You bury your heart in prayer. You yes. have a sour day. Talk to the Lord about oh. it. He might turn your day around. He might have you steer through that rain cloud just so you know. You know, look to me and I'll pull you out the other side. Right? Yeah, a lot of times blow this storm will be over soon. I'll just endure it. Sure. You don't know, look for that sweet fellowship in the time of storm. The shelter in the time of storm. You don't like that? I think a lot of people do. It doesn't just happen. All right, it's up to us to pray. And make sure that we pray, right? Go to 2 Chronicles 7 14. Man, time's up. 2 Chronicles 7 14. You know what it says here when I read it? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek myself, my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from them. They will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Heal their land. That's what we should be looking for today. Go to Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Maybe I say it one more time, I'll find it. Luke 18. There it is. Alright, Luke 18, verse 9. Alright, this is not what we're supposed to do. Right. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Think about that for a second. Right? Well, I never want to be in a church where that's right, what's, what the deal is. They seem glorifying the Lord because they are in a position where they can. Right? That's not what any of us should be aspiring to do. It says here, two men went up in verse 10. That's what I there. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee, that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even at this publican. I tell you right now, if there's a person that's humble of heart, they're not going to take this stance. They're going to realize they're just as unworthy as the publican, but it's only because of the grace of the God that they have any chance of drawing nigh unto the God that is in heaven, right? The publican standing afar off will not even not lift up so much his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, smote upon his own breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, he said. Yeah, I tell you, this man went down to his house, just by rather than the other. Right? They didn't say much. God, be merciful unto me, he said. Right? What's the last time you asked God for mercy? All right. If you're going through it, ask God for mercy. Amen. All right, Lord, I, can't, I feel like I can't take it. Yeah. He might give you the extra bit of strength to get you through. Amen. He might. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, he probably will. I'm like, God's not going to answer my prayer. Well, then, are you saved then? Right. Do you know the God that I know? Amen. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If not, he's not going to hear your prayer until you get saved. Now, I'll tell you right now, just repeating words doesn't get people saved. I'll tell you right now, if I stub my foot and it hurts, whatever comes out of my mouth is not going to stop the pain. But it's a result of what's happening inside. Right. Right. Ouch. Right? That doesn't stop the pain. If you say, ouch, you're not helping me with the pain. No. At all. But I guarantee you, if somebody gets saved, what's happening in their heart is going to be manifested through prayer. Yes. It's going to be manifested. They can't help but say so. Right? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. If you're a child of God, you're going to be able to say so. Yes. Right? If you're too ashamed to say that you're a child of God, we'll pray the Lord will give you boldness to be able to do it. Right. I know that the world is intent, has intimidated a lot of Christians into thinking that they cannot give the gospel. Right. That you can't speak about our God in public. That you cannot tell about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you right now, you can. Amen. Amen. Don't let the world intimidate you. Right. Don't let it. It's going to try. Right. The shadows of those the big figures that try to shut you up, they're out there. But our God is greater. Amen. Our God is so much greater than them. Amen. Right? Now, I'll say, how do you get a very hard today? You're very prepared, like I said. That's what's wrong with us today. We spend more time in front of the computer or on the radio or in front of the TV or on the cell phone looking for an answer. When all we have to do is spend time in prayer with God when our hearts are sick. When our hearts are 
get sick before. It happens. Sometimes the Christian, you get it cold. From yeah. Right. It was a little colder today than I would have liked, Lord. Please help me. Yeah. Right? Please help me today. I made a mistake, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I make mistakes all the time. Multiple times a day. Right? I'm not going to. I, I try to remember not to carry 20 at a time. Let me, you know, not go bulk shopping. Look, look, look. See what I did last year? It's been a year since I made you. Look at all these things that I did without you. Right, don't spend that time outside, Lord. But the medicine for heart is for the medicine for the heart is prayer. Go to Colossians chapter four. Colossians chapter four. Colossians chapter four. Verse twenty-four says, "Master, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven." Continue the prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. Look all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for I am also in bonds. Right? Now why don't we have power today? Let's go to James chapter look at you. James chapter. I'll say it right now. If we're doing the right thing in the Lord, if we're praying whenever we're supposed to, we spend time with God, we can't help but be right with each other. Now, it says, For whence come but for whence come wars and fightings among you, come they not hence? Even of your lusts that they war, that war in your members. Oh, yeah. The Lord knows we have these lusts in our members. That's right. It's natural. Yeah. It's expected. Right? Now, if you spend more time with the Lord, sometimes these things are somewhat muted, but you're probably still going to stumble here and here. If you don't think you're going to, you're even more in danger of stumbling. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask the miss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is, in, is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw an eye unto God, and he will draw an eye unto you. Cleanse your hands, and sinners, and purify your hearts, and don't mind it. How do you do that? Like David did in Psalm 51. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Right. right? Create me a new heart, Lord. Go to the Lord for that. Don't go to brother or sister so-and-so for that. You can ask your, your brethren to pray for you. You can get advice from them in the Word of God. But it is up to you to pray, to restore, if you will. Not restore in some cases, but to renew your relationship with the Lord every day. Amen. First thing in the morning, throughout the day several times, and then at night before your head hits the pillow, to say to our God in heaven, Lord, I love you and thank you for what you've done for me today. And I pray, Lord, that you would give me the rest that I need, that if it's Harry one more day, to be what you lay out for me to do tomorrow. Right? I don't think that's a very boastful prayer. I think the Lord will answer that. Go to James chapter 5, verse 7. Okay, James chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, to have long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. The Lord is looking for you. Just like that fruit that someone has planted. You look at the trees, you look at the bushes, you look at the vines, you see everything growing and developing, and you see things ripening, and you're waiting for the harvest. The Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for the harvest today. So why don't we prepare ourselves for the harvest by making our hearts ripen to the harvest, right? By sharing our hearts with others in the Lord, by lifting others up in prayer, by helping those Christians. If their vine is overgrown, if their wall is overgrown with doors and thistles, how we help our brethren or offer his praise sometimes, not even mention to them, but praying. Let them know we're praying for them. So the Lord will lay on their hearts how to fix and build the wall back up, how to rip down the thorns and thistles, how to repair the wall so that they can have a testimony before the Lord that inherently, by the way, is before the world so they can show the Lord what he has done and we can proclaim his righteousness to the world. That's what we're supposed to be able to be. But sometimes we feel like we can't because of what we allow ourselves to be burdened down with in the world, in the world today. We're supposed to be patient. It says in verse 8, be also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Now, he says, hey, I'm coming back. Amen. I'm coming back to receive you unto myself. I'll prepare a place for you. <laughs> that where I am, there you may be also. Yeah. Be comforted with those words. Rush not against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge stand before the Lord. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. 
But above all things, my brethren, swear not, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We always want to say that first and mention none of the rest of it. Right? I'm saying right now, the Lord has a plan for each and every one of us. If we want revival, like we have those services coming up, we're going to pray one for another. The Lord will move in this church. They will touch our, touch our hearts. That we will truly be a family. If there is truly a Christian in here, which I believe there are, there should be no separation between our hearts. If we all believe in the same Lord, if we love the same God, if we spend time in prayer and supplication, if we lift each other up in prayer, then who's going to be able to come between us? Amen. Absolutely nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. I don't care if you think different, if you look different, if you see different, if you think that a potato is a potato, a tomato is a tomato, it doesn't matter. There are things that are foundational uh, truths in the Word of God, and if we stand on that, or well, we can pray for one another, and the Lord is going to do, be able to do great things in the house of God. But I always tell you, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? If we play with fire and bring strange fire into the house of God, you're going to get burned, and you're going to burn someone else. Right. So what's going to happen? Sometimes when you cut out cancer, you have to cut out some of the good flesh too. And that hurts when that happens. Yeah. Those things, those hatreds that we allow to build up, those concerns, those problems, those issues, those gripes, those murmurings, those disputings, those discords, destroy the house of God. That's why the one, he that sowed discord is an abomination. Right? Amen. I think sometimes you shouldn't be afraid to confront those people either. Good man. But you do it in prayer. Prayerfully, yes. not the flesh. It's really easy to knock someone's teeth out. Absolutely. Where's the glory of God in that? Where is it? Right. Now, the Lord said, knock that person's teeth out. Well, that's between you and the Lord. Amen. I know he's going to tell you to do that, but you know, you have to. Like, you know, that little Lord is in your heart, right? Amen. Now, here's some prayers we looked at Samson's prayer in Judges chapter 16. The Lord, in Matthew 6, we're we'll going close there. Psalm 51, right? Mercy confessed and cleansing, right? Psalm 51, that's David. Right. After Bathsheba. His sin is in the Bible, and everybody knows that. Can you imagine going to heaven going, David? Shame on you. Yeah. Right? So if you learn to look at that, there's only a specific thing that the Lord brought up to that situation. Right. The matter of Uriah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So God would forgive David for that. Right. Not to say I'm better than David, because I'm definitely not better than David. But think about the abundance of his mercy that's lived for us. Amen. 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 Right. Now, we're going to close with Matthew chapter 6. I know it went a little bit long this morning, but there's even more and more you go on forever and ever preaching about prayer. Amen. And how important yeah. it is. Amen. But we hope to accomplish anything from the Lord's where we should be doing. Yeah. Right. So there's one that I'll pray it. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Right. So thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee open. Right. But when ye pray, you do not make repetition, this is easy to do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But not, but not be not be therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So think about that today. The Lord knows what you need before you ask. Right? Very knows. Yep. But he can't give it to you until you line up with him so he can. Right? And lastly, I'll tell you right now, the Bible says. If you believe in the that God has raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved, Lord Jesus Christ, right? The reason that we want to tell people about the Lord is so they can come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sure. Right? If you believe in thy heart, right? thou shalt be saved. That's what it says. Right? And faith going by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Right? When you believe something, we really have a strong opinion about that. And sometimes our actions are dictated by our strong beliefs. I really believe today that if we care about the world that's out there and what we believe and who we believe our God is, we're going to reach out to those that are lost. Amen. We're going to reach 
reach out to those that are Christians. And you think that's fun, it is not fun. Especially when you know Amen. that you're not wrong. Amen. All right, what is the end goal? Is it so you can sit on a pedestal yourself and say, I have arrived? Right. Or is it so you can say that we have arrived? Amen. Those that have been the Lord. So I invite you this morning. I'm pretty sure everyone that's in here has made a proclamation of faith. But if you're not saved this morning, the altar is open. But regardless, if you're saved or not, everyone has an opportunity to come to the altar. So why don't you come this morning if the Lord has made something on your heart, pray about it. If you've got an issue, come to the altar and pray. If you have a concern, come to the altar and pray. You can pray where you are. It doesn't matter. But take this time not to worry about what's for lunch, but what the Lord will have you to do. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, we thank you for what we heard from your word. Lord, uh, as we say all the time, we're not here to hear man, but we're here to hear from our God. I'm sure we spoke out of your word this morning. Amen. Lord, if uh, anyone has a uh, reservation on coming to the altar, Lord, uh, you humble yourselves in the sight of man, God. Speak to hearts, Lord, if any is not saved, I pray that you throw that one onto you. Lord, and if uh, us who do know you as our Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you help us to search our heart for the things that we heard. Lord, so many points. Just uh, uh, keep these things fresh in our heart and help us to meditate on them. Yeah. Lord, bless this time of invitation. May your will be done. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Number 174. Yeah. Hey. 